Welcome to the world of scale modeling with Mike Ashey, where techniques, tips, and creativity come alive with dozens of tutorials, projects, tape-up reviews, and picture references to help you build better scale models and enjoy our wonderful hobby. Welcome to part seven of our multi-part series on detailing and building the Revell Monogram 148 scale B17G. In this video, we'll focus our efforts on detailing all of the 50 caliber machine guns. So, without further ado, let's get started. The 50 caliber machine guns that come with the kit can definitely be improved by adding these Masters two-part brass barrels. They're very easy to assemble. They come in two parts, as I said. You have the outer jacket and then the inner part, which is the barrel. And to prepare them for assembly, all you need to do is you, you need to remount the inside of the, uh, the jackets because sometimes there's tiny burrs in there. And then this slips into place. And uh, you glue it with just a tiny drop of super glue right there. And uh, you just kind of roll it on your hand to get rid of the excess glue. And you're done. So they really come out nice. And I've been using these on several kits, both the 148 scale and the 132nd scale ones. And they really enhance the appearance of the machine guns. On this kit, I chose for the single 50 caliber machine guns, these resin renditions of the 50 caliber bases from True Details. And they come four in a sprue. And they're really, really nice. The Verlinden kit that I've been using for detailing also has uh, 50 caliber machine gun bases, but these are noticeably smaller than the ones from True Details. And I really like the Drew Detail ones better because they have a lot more surface detail. So, how I attached the 50 caliber mach brass machine gun barrels to the True Details resin parts was I highlighted the tip with either a red or black marker so that it would highlight the surface. I center punch the resin and on resin it's really important to get the center punch correct the first time because resin is soft and so if you do it right the first time you just drill straight down and you get a perfect fit. And the base of these two-part brass barrels are approximately 0.037 to 0.038 to 0.039 and it varies a little bit I, I can't explain why they just are and so when I drill them out I drill it out to 0 0.040 to 041 so that you have a little bit of wiggle room so that you can set the barrels correctly and the way I glue these barrels in place is to put a little bit of just a tiny drop of white glue there slip it in and if white glue pops out clean it up with a q-tip position it let it dry and then hit it with a tiny drop of super glue and you're done so the b17 had five uh, singles they had the two waist guns they had the 50 caliber for the uh, radio operator and there are two singles uh, in the forward part of the fuselage in the left and right sides to center punch I use this typical center puncher and I've had this for eons and it works really really well. My drill bits are this set of drill bits and I've had these drill bits for 40 years and they're still sharp. Really nice set. And then I use a twist drill to set my drill bits in place. I don't really use the twist very much um, especially on these barrels. When you're drilling these out, you need to be precise and go very, very slow. So I just very slowly turn it. And those drill bits are very sharp, so they cut through the resin or the plastic pretty easily. The uh, <clears throat> monogram kit, originally the monogram kit had a barrel that looked like this. And over the years, they slightly improved the appearance of the model and upgraded their barrels to look like this. And while these look better than these, you can definitely improve them with the master two-part brass barrels. So 
<clears throat> and the way I do it is I go ahead and cut off the barrels. I flatten the surface and on the pla black plastic I highlight it with a silver marker and you can see on this one it's been center punched. The left side's been center punched. So that's how you start. And then you use progressively larger and larger drill bits in order to get your proper diameter. If you go too fast and don't progressively use drill bits, you'll collapse the sides of this plastic and I'll show you how thin this gets. This is the completed one and of course it's got a little bit of wiggle to it so that I can properly position the barrels and it looks much better than this one. You can see the barrels on the, the master's barrels are thinner. And I've been using these master barrels a lot on my 148 scale kits and my 132nd scale kits, and I really like them. They really enhance the appearance of both the machine guns and the overall appearance of the model. So, <clears throat> again, you see how I got a little bit of wiggle there so that I can properly position them. So, um, see how thin that wall is? If you go too fast and don't use incrementally larger drill bits, you'll collapse those walls. If you go real slow and use the uh, and go and and choose your drill bits carefully and go up, say every other drill bit at a time, you can get really really thin walls. And here again, you use tiny drops of Elmer's glue to position them. And once they once the glue dries, and you hit them with some super glue right on the tip. And that's all you have to do. And these will look really good when they're done. This one uh, goes on the forward turret, the, the, the forward fuselage turret that's uh, below where the bombardier is. And again, a little bit of wiggle room. Once these are set and dried, there's a set of flash suppressors that go on here. And again, I'll position them with a tiny drop of Elmer's glue. And then once it's dry, I'll hit it with some super glue and that'll hold it in place. Really nice. Look really, really good. This is for the ball turret. Same thing. These Masters two part barrels will look really good once everything's painted and put together. Now, on the tail gun, what I did was I cut off the barrels, flattened that surface a little bit with a sanding stick, glued that small piece in place and then drilled these out and drilled them all the way through and then put a backing on here so these barrels wouldn't slip into the fuselage ruining my experience and then uh, put them in place again a little bit of wiggle room so that I can position them and then once they're, once they're positioned properly and dry then I'll put the flash suppressors on here Elmer's glue then after it dries I'll hit it with a little bit of super glue so uh, I really like the way all this came out and um, it's really going to enhance the overall appearance of the model and add an extra high level of detail to it. So that's how I do my barrels and um, I hope this was helpful to you. Again, when you're drilling them out of plastic you, or plastic or resin, you have to go slow. And uh, I forgot to mention this. If <clears throat> when you center punch, if as you're drilling it you see that it's off-centered what you do is you can take the tip of a sharp number 11 exacto blade and get in there and just carefully peel off tiny amounts at a time and then you go up two steps on a bit drill again and it'll center the hole for you and you may have to do that more than once and I had to do that on this side but as you can see it worked out okay now on resin you can't do that and the reason is it's because resin is very, very soft. So it's very important to get that center punch as close to the center as possible. If it's a micron off to the left and to the right, you'll be okay. But if it's too far, it'll, it'll look weird and it's gonna collapse that, that side that it's offset to. So it's really, really important, uh, again, to get the resin one center punch because resin is so soft. The 50 caliber two-part brass barrels have now been glued in place. This is uh, for the upper turret. 
and they look pretty good. How I did that was I made a jig. And uh, I'll turn it the other way so you can read it. A 10 thousandths base and a 40 thousandths strip. And you tape down the receiver group on this end and carefully insert the barrels and position them so they rest on this 40 thousandths strip and glue them into place with tiny drops of super glue. So I definitely recommend making a jig. It makes life a lot easier. So here's the ball turret. And here's the forward turret with the flash suppressors on here. And the way I put the flash suppressors on here, I put a tiny drop of white glue on the tip, slid the, the flash suppressor down onto the barrel, positioned it, and then once I got it the way I wanted it, and the white and the tiny drop of white glue will kind of hold it in place and then hit it with a tiny drop of super glue here and here. And so now I've got my flash suppressors, and it's going to look really, really nice, much better than the... Uh, kit barrels. On the forward 50 caliber machine guns in the nose, what I did was <clears throat> I was able to cut out the ball joint here, but first I drilled it out to 0 0.041 inches in diameter and then cut it off and then I inserted it. So now these will fit nicely into their openings in the nose. Now, what's this white piece here? I've got one here and on. This is for the radio operator's feeder box, ammo box, and there's one here. And this ammo box will go in the nose up against the bulkhead and it's got a a strip of white plastic here. The other thing is, and I'll show you this on when uh, we review all the cockpit and navigator interior parts, I always glue a piece of plastic to the back of resin where it can't be seen so that I can then use testers glue to glue it in place and position it properly. And it gives you about 10, 15 seconds of working time. If you don't do this, you get one shot with your super glue. And if it's crooked, that's the way it stays. So by doing this, and um, it, it really makes life easy. So I've done this on all my photo etch parts and all the resin parts I'm gonna add to the interior. So I got, this is the the gun for the uh, radio operator station. And this is the prefabricated, and you buy them this way from a company off of eBay that supplies them out of Kiev, Ukraine, believe it or not. And uh, it slips, the, the tiny strip of plastic I have here slips right into the belt feeder. And so uh, I use these on my B25J and see if I can get it back on here. There we go. And it's going to look pretty good. I'll have two of these in the nose, one for each of the uh, of the waist guns. And um, it's going to look really, really nice. It's really going to add a nice effect to, uh, to this. Now, <clears throat> this will go the other way. It'll feed up and above or under because this box will be on this side of the fuselage. So it's really going to add a nice, a nice level of detail. And of course, <clears throat> the waist gunner, the glass nose pieces, I have these pieces installed. You're not going to see much inside of the fuselage area, um, either for the radio operator's compartment or the compartment associated with the waist guns. So what you're going to see essentially is that. That's upside down. So I'll run the uh, 50 caliber ammo belts this way and I'll put, a, I'll put about an inch and a half on each one. Uh, I'm not going to connect them to the boxes because there's no way to do that uh, the way this model is set up. But you will be able to see the feeder going off in, in inside the fuselage.
so um, it's gonna look really really nice when it's done I gotta tell you I really like these uh, true details 50 caliber machine guns I'm gonna have to get some more of these they're really really nice and and that's about it so the uh, the tail gun has also got flash suppressors on it but I gotta wait until I install these which will probably be one of the last things I do after everything is attached and the fuselage is buttoned up and I've got uh, the finished coats of paint on it then I'll put the flash suppressors on here so that they can be properly positioned so yeah it's looking pretty good and uh, I've got everything I need for the 50 caliber machine guns I'm still looking for uh, some photo wedge gun sight rings that will go right about here so I'm hoping I can pick some up find them on eBay <clears throat> I may have some spares in uh, my photo etch box I just haven't looked yet but uh, if I do I'll put a tiny tiny drill hole here and then put that gun sight ring right in place so um, that pretty much concludes uh, the changes that I made to the 50 caliber machine guns and um, so yeah it's all looking pretty good. I forgot to mention the twin 50 calibers that I made for the uh, tail gunner position. Uh, I had two spare uh, 50 caliber uh, receiver groups from my True Details uh, resin kit. And so uh, I've made this part versus the kit part, which is basically a plate, what almost looks like just two sticks. So there was no detail on them at all. So once the uh, canopy is in place, you're going to see about that much. And uh, I think I may put feeders on both of these sides. I just haven't kind of fitted it into place yet. But uh, I really like the way this looks. This will add another, another level of detail to the Afghaner's position. So, real simple to make. And um, I like the way it came out. The last piece of uh, detail that I added to the single 50 caliber machine guns was gun sight rings. <clears throat> I found these on eBay. There are several different manufacturers. I've actually had these for years. I, I completely forgot I had them. And uh, drilled a tiny, tiny hole and uh, dropped them into place, put some super glue in here, and then had about two or three seconds worth of working time in order to position it so each one came out pretty good so it adds just another level of detail to these nicely detailed 50 caliber machine guns there we go you can see it now this one These are the two that go in the uh, bombardiers area. This one. And this one. Came out pretty good. And once these are painted in detail, they'll look really, really sharp. This concludes part seven of detailing and building the Ravel Monogram 148 scale B17G. Stay tuned for part eight where we focus our attention on the cockpit and tail clear parts, detailing the hatches that we had cut out, and adding some interior details to the areas where the hatches will be open. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. And when you get the chance, visit our website at www.mikeashy.com where you're going to find dozens of free PDF downloads including tutorials, picture references, model galleries, projects, and my five original scale modeling books. Thanks to Ben Sound and Vidivo for the royalty-free music and happy scale modeling!